All right, before we bring in our next guest, we want to make sure that everybody's in the proper spirit. People say you know them can't believe Jamaica, we have a bobsled team. We have yes. this one, there is. I know one, Junior. You, Sanka, the fastest of the fastest of Jamaican sprinters. Go to Olympics, fight for Jamaica. Jamaica, we got a bobsled team. Tonight, Jamaica has a skiing team. Well, a one-member ski team, that is. And we are thrilled to be joined by the nation of Jamaica's first-ever alpine skier to compete in the Winter Olympics. British-born international DJ Benjamin Alexander never even put on a pair of skis until he was in his 30s. But now he's going for the gold next month in Beijing. Benjamin, kind enough to join us tonight. Thanks so much for talking with me. My absolute pleasure. I was smiling and singing along to that song there. Oh, you already knew the lyrics. Okay, fun. Well, of course. fitting, fitting that you should know them. And you say that the first Jamaican bobsled team, after all, from the 1988 Games and, and that movie Cool Runnings was actually part of what inspired your own Olympic dream. What kind of support have you received from the legendary bobsled crew? Yeah, so um, Dudley Stokes, who was the pilot of the 1988 bobsled team and went to four Olympic Games as, a, as an athlete, has been my mentor for the last 18 months. And it's just incredible to have someone who basically uh, wrote the book on doing outlandish things for Caribbean Nation in the Winter Games on my team and just giving me advice along the way. And how does it feel to be competing in an Olympics for a sport that you just tried out for the first time six years ago? Kind of surreal, actually. Um, I've been planning meticulously to get to this point. And sometimes when you actually get to the, the place you've been looking at for so long, it, it feels weird to have arrived. So surreal is the one word I've been using. And, and what was your first experience like actually hitting the slopes? Did it just come extremely naturally to you? <laughs> no, you said it there without realizing hitting the slopes. I hit the <laughs> ground like 20 plus times on my first time skiing. I absolutely was not a natural, but I was tenacious and I had grit and determination. I really wanted to get good enough to ski with my friends. And so I just kept trying and little by little, one step at a time, I, was get, I got better and better. And now here we are. Here we are heading to Beijing. It, when did you become particularly serious about getting to that Olympic level? And what kind of training did you have to undergo in order to get there? Yeah, so I've been on this mission now for about two and a half years. Um, and I've been a full-time sponsored athlete for the better part of the last two years. Training for me, someone that's trying to you know, shortcut my way to the Olympics uh, in the shortest time possible was just all about time on the mountain, time in training sessions like the one we're seeing on the screen right now, and just getting used to the feel of the skis and getting used to being in the course as much as possible. I skied 450 days in the last two years, and the only reason that number is not much higher is because of the pandemic and closed borders to the Southern Hemisphere through this period. Do you still have time to DJ? No, no, no. The two things are not mutually, they're not, they're the complete opposite. I mean, in my DJ life, I'd be waking up at 10 p.m. to go to dinner at midnight, to go into a club at 3 a.m. and maybe getting home at 4 or 5 p.m. the following day. This is the complete opposite. Often I'm exhausted by the time it gets to 4 or 5 p.m. after getting up at 6 a.m. for training. So I'm in bed by 9, 10 p.m. at the latest these days. The two things do not work together. So just shredding it up on the mountains and not on the ones and twos, but but for good reason, Beijing bound after all. And, and you grew up, uh, you spent a lot of your time in the United Kingdom. Your father is Jamaican, but you've only spent a few months uh, actually on the island yourself. Why was it important for you to represent the Caribbean nation? Well, look, as a mixed race individual, you always represent the minority of any group you're in at any given time. That can change second by second, room by room. So if I'm with my white friends, I'm the black guy. And if I'm with my black friends, I'm the white guy. Or Carlton from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, as they would say. <laughs> so, so as a skier in a predominantly white sport of skiing, I was always the black representative and my friends know of my Jamaican heritage. So they would always reference cool runnings. They would always reference the Olympics. And they said, hey, you should go to the Olympics. I guess I took that a little bit too seriously. So in the world of skiing, I am the black representative among my friends. So it was never a question about which of the two nations I would try to support. What do you hope that people take away from hearing about your journey to the Olympics? Yeah, bottom line, anything is possible. And that doesn't just mean that everyone should get out there and get on a pair of skis, which they should. But it means that if you're in your 40s or 50s and you think something has passed you by that you should have started it when you were younger, then I, you know, I call you out on that. If I can go from zero to Olympian starting at the age of 32 and now here I am 38, you can do that thing that you thought that wasn't possible. At least give it a try. Have some 
give it a give it an F, but give it some sh give it some uh, give it a shot. And I'm curious because quite often we hear about you know these Olympians being very young people and having youth on their side. But I I'm wondering if there's an argument that when you're a little older, a little more mature, you're you're a bit wiser, right? And you're able to use kind of some of your life experiences in the sport. Would, would you say that that's there's some truth to that? Yeah, absolutely. So from an athletic and a flexibility point of view, I'm massively disadvantaged to those that started skiing at the age of two and have the the, the, the movements hardwired into their brain. I could never catch up with that. But a big part of got me, the big, big, big part of what got me to where I am today is my ability to market myself, ability to manage a budget, ability to understand travel logistics, especially during this incredibly complicated period that we've had over the last two years with all of the COVID restrictions. And without those hats that I wore in previous roles as a DJ, working in finance and working in technology, um, also being an engineering graduate, I don't think I would have got here, not in the short time that I had. You certainly wear a lot of hats. We are going to be cheering for you in your winter hat as you are going down the slopes. Benjamin Alexander, thank you so much for your time. All the best to you. Good luck in Beijing. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.